Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Erica with Memory Box Candle Co. And I make videos all about making and selling candles. And today's video, I just kind of wanted to compile um, a list of how to be the most efficient in your candle making. So I'm not really referring to those of you that are just getting started with candle making, you're going through the testing process and you're just kind of getting familiar with it. I'm more talking to those of you that are either just about to launch your business, you have launched your business, or you're just looking to try to figure out ways to save time and make your candle making way more efficient. I do also wanna preface that some of these tips are at a little bit more of an advanced candle making level. So please don't overwhelm yourself if you are trying to do all of these or if the processes that I am going to be sharing in this video are going to overwhelm you. Definitely take it little by little and maybe incorporate one or two of these just to get started. So definitely the first thing and one of the most important things when it comes to making your candle making so much more efficient and something that I actually didn't do until a few months into my business when I had launched was to switch from the double boiler method. So typically when we get into candle making in the beginning and we're just making a few candles at a time, the double boiler method um, is just fine to get started and for testing. And if you're not familiar with what the double boiler method is, it's essentially just taking a pot, filling a little bit of the bottom with water, and then putting the pouring pitcher inside to get heated up. You have the wax inside the pouring pitcher and then you heat it up that way as the pot starts to boil. However, if you are looking to make a lot more candles at a time, you will find that the double boiler method takes forever. It takes forever and it drives you crazy. I used to just stand in the kitchen like I have no idea what I'm doing right now. I try to be efficient on the side with prepping different things, but it would take sometimes 15, 20 minutes just to make a couple candles and it drove me absolutely insane. So I highly recommend to upgrade to either a Presto pot or if you really, really know that you're gonna be making a lot of candles, I highly recommend to upgrade to a larger wax melter or something like the DigiBoil behind me. Um, the cost-wise of, of investing into that and being able to have all that wax melted down at once just so you can individually pour what you need into a pouring pitcher and then pour the fragrance in from there, it is just so beyond efficient and I would never go back. I would love to have uh, seven of these. I don't know. I would love to have just like a gigantic one just to have all that wax melted. And yes, of course, it does take a little bit of time, a, a little bit more time to melt the wax. Uh, but I will be talking about how you can be more efficient um, in between that time. But if you are at that point where you are just so sick of the double boiler, highly recommend to upgrade to something like a Presto pot or just a larger melter. I used a Presto pot for, I believe, a little over a year um, and it worked great. It was able to melt down a lot of wax, but then it just got to the point where I just needed more and more wax melted at once because I started to make a lot more quantities of candles at a time. Another way to be a lot more efficient in the candle making process is to make use of the time that it takes for your wax to actually melt. So in this situation, uh, let's assume that we are working with either a Presto pot or a DigiBoil that takes a little bit of time to actually melt and heat up to the correct temperature to be able to use to be used for candle making. And during this process, you can get your jars prepared. You can figure out what scents you're going to be making and you can pour your fragrances ahead of time. Highly, highly, highly recommend this to pour your fragrances ahead of time and have it ready to go. This has been the number one thing that has sped up my candle making process. I used to pour as I went. So I would be making a scent and I would get everything set up and I would have to pour and measure out the fragrance oil. And then I would make the candle and then I'd move on to the next scent. And then I would pour, measure out the fragrance oil before I would go through the measuring wax process. And it just took way too much time. It just was not efficient. And I highly, highly recommend to pour your fragrances ahead of time if you need to label the containers. Uh, for me, it's these uh, little silicone measuring cups right here. So I use these now to measure and hold my fragrance oil. And I just go through and I'll either put the bottle next to it. So here's, for instance, I made some Malibu Creek Trail um, candles yesterday. And what I do is if I have room on the table, I'll just put the measured fragrance oil in the silicone mold right next to this so I know which scent it is. But you can also add a sticky or any way to let you know what fragrance it is. 
It's also a really good idea that if you are going to be measuring the same kind of fragrance oil, but you're gonna be using it for two different size jars. So let's say for these, I'm measuring out 80 grams of fragrance oil, but for the larger ones, I'm measuring out 120 grams of fragrance oil for the amount of candles that I'm gonna be pouring at a time. I don't wanna get those mixed up. So I will put a little sticky or I will have a sheet of paper and just kind of line it up and then put, you know, Malibu Creek Trail 120 grams, Malibu Creek Trail 80 grams. And I know which one is which. You can also put for the for the eight ounce tins or for the 13.5 ounce jars or what, however you wanna label it, just make sure you're labeling it because we don't wanna be mixing up the amounts of fragrance oil and we don't want you know any kind of recipe changes or anything. We wanna make sure that we're staying organized with that, but it is very efficient to pour the fragrance oil ahead of time and it's really good to do while your wax is melting so you can take advantage of that time. Another thing you can do to be a lot more efficient in your candle making process, and I know I've mentioned this many times before, I'm a huge advocate for batch work. I think that batch making and, you know, whether it's wicking tons of jars at once or labeling a lot of jars at once, making a lot of candles at once, whatever you're doing in a short amount of time and you're focusing on in that moment, you're just gonna keep getting better and better and faster with it and be a lot more efficient by focusing your time in that one, thing that you are working on, that one part of the candle making process that you are focusing your energy and time on in that moment, you're just gonna get better at it and it's just gonna be a lot more efficient than just trying to wick candles right before you make them and then pour those and then go back to wicking and doing the jars and then taking them over and pouring it. That just sounds absolutely just too much for me, just I could not do that. Um, so highly recommend do a lot of batch work, do a lot of prep work ahead of time. Um, and I also am actually gonna combine, I was gonna bring this one up in a second or in the next topic, but I think that this actually kind of goes hand in hand with that is to purchase multiple pouring pitchers because this also helps with batch work and making larger quantities of a certain scent. So I did mention in my last video or my last Make Candles With Me videos that my friend Jessie, sometimes she'll pour or she'll um, fill the pitcher up really full and make um, as many candles as possible in that pitcher. And then she'll pour half of that into another pitcher and then pour and then take that other pitcher and pour. So she's being more efficient in that time of actually spending mixing the fragrance oils together with the wax and that she can actually get a lot more candles poured within that time. And I also, if you don't wanna do that, um, I also highly recommend to have two pitchers going on at once. So in my candle making session recently, I actually got back into the habit, which I used to do before and I stopped doing, and again, just trying to get back more into the efficiency of things, is never having a pitcher that's empty. So for instance, what I would do is I would take two pitchers and I would fill one of them with one scent and get that all going, mix it up, put it off to the side, bring the other pitcher over, get that all poured, pour it in the fragrance oil, mix it up, and bring that one that I first did, go and pour the candles. That second one is still waiting there to be poured. But when I come back, I go and start pouring more wax, pouring more fragrance in it, put that off to the side, grab the other one, come over here. So it's a constant rotation and a constant wax in a pot waiting to be poured or wax in a pitcher waiting to be poured. And I found that I was being like, oh wow, okay, so it's you know making sure I'm not wasting any time in between. And with something like the DigiBoil, I mean, it just makes it so much easier to just, you know, open a, or turn it on, have the wax come out. And it's just such a faster process with measuring, getting the fragrance poured. Um, candle making can be a pretty quick process. Um, I will say that the slowest process is definitely the pouring, um, especially if you're working with something like these matte black jars because you don't want to spill. And then the last part that I'm going to be talking about in this video doesn't have to do with the actual candle making process, um, but it does have to do with the inventory and organization. So Chris, for the longest time, had told me, organize all of your products. I don't know why things aren't organized. He's like, I would do it so differently than you have it. And for me, it was kind of just, I don't know if this is just like a messy person thing, like a disorganized person thing, but you start to remember where things are when they're not in the correct place. <laughs> And that's kind of how it was on here. So I had my candles and I knew where they went on the shelf and I knew where they were, but 
gosh, do does it just help so much more to have everything organized alphabetically? So I alphabetize my wax melts and I alphabetize my candles now and also my room sprays as well too. So it just makes it so much easier and it's a lot more helpful for Chris because if he's helping me do inventory, then he's able to look and not just kind of stand there looking around like, do we have this, do we have this? He's able to just look alpha alphabetically and if we're out of stock, then he doesn't have to continue just trying to search for it and you know if he didn't see it or whatever. So uh, it makes it so much easier to have everything alphabetized. But those are all the tips that I have for you guys in today's video. Essentially, what kind of inspired the topic of this video was me trying to think, you know, if I want Chris to help me more or in the future, if we do end up hiring an employee, I want to make sure that the processes that I have in place right now can be replicable, that there that there's a system. There's a memory box candle co candle making system. I don't want it to be a, well, Erica knows what she's doing and how to do it, so we gotta just wait for her to be able to understand everything. I don't wanna do that, and that's why I like my formulas and I like basically having the, you know, the rhythm and everything, and I wanna start thinking about my candle making process as a system that can be teachable and replicable to somebody else coming in to learn it. So that's kind of how I started to think about things. And also efficiency is great because you can get more things done in a shorter amount of time. So that's also really, really good. Saving time, saving money, you know, making more products to then make more money within that time frame. So I think that is all that I wanted to talk about in today's video. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to leave it a thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Also, don't forget to follow me over on Instagram at Erica Marie Morris, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.